Hi, welcome to the channel and today we will be discussing about arithmetic progression. Before learning arithmetic progression, you should understand what is progression. So, a progression is a group of numbers which are arranged in a definite order. It's a group of numbers I am underlining and in a definite order following a certain rule is called a progression. It's also called a series or a sequence also. So try to understand three things. I have underlined them. The very important things, a group of numbers. It could be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 which are arranged in a definite order. This is in a in an ascending order. Follows a certain rule. Everything. You talk about 2, it's greater by 1. You talk about 3, it's greater by 1. It's 4 is greater by 1 from 3. Similarly, so every number is greater by 1 from its preceding number and that's the rule. So this particular set of numbers, this set of 5 numbers are called a progression or a series or a sequence. But here there are only 5 numbers and therefore it is called a finite series. Remember these terms, finite series. There is also a possibility that even infinite numbers can be arranged in an order to form a series or a progression or a sequence. For example, I will say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and I will give dot, 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 dot. This implies that the very next number will follow 6, next number will follow 7 and there is no end point to this series. So such type of series is called infinite series. Another term I am introducing is called element. Every single component of this series is called an element. Element or a term. You should remember here 1 is an element of this series, similarly 2, similarly 3, similarly 4, 5, all are elements of this series or this progression or the sequence. They are also called terms. These words you should remember because we will be frequently using these terms going forward. I'm not erasing the main definition of the progression because you should remember this and then I am going to tell you about what is arithmetic progression. That's the next level I'm going a little bit deeper now. So what is arithmetic progression or in short called as AP? I'll Write it down here so that every time you are, I refer to AP, you say that this is arithmetic progression. So what is AP then? So when elements are linked to their previous terms by adding or subtracting a certain quantity is called an AP. Look. This definition is again following the same previous definitions. How? When elements, when I talk about elements, definitely there are more than one element are there. So it is a group of numbers. The first criteria it has fulfilled are linked to their previous terms, which are arranged in, an, in a definite order. So there will be an order has to be maintained by adding or subtracting a certain quantity. So you have either it will go by adding or you will subtract. What you will do? 
a certain quantity and that's the rule a certain rule so you will either add or subtract a certain quantity this is the rule that has to be followed and then this entire set will be called as a arithmetic progression right let me give more examples we saw one example 1 to 3 per 5 it's very easy to uh, tell but let's do some more uh, examples so i'll give a set up let's say even number 6 8 10 and i'm putting dot dot set of even numbers and this is an infinite series very easy to tell that and then every time you'll see there is a addition of 2 now if you add 2 to the preceding number you will get the next number everywhere you see everywhere every term if you add plus 2 you will get the next term now this is an arithmetic progression by our definition I will also say that in the reverse 10, 8, 6, 4, 2 is this an arithmetic progression? Of course. Look at this. So, how will you get 8? You subtract 2. How will you get 6? You subtract 2 from 8. Same for 4, same for this number, this term as well. So you subtract. In many of the books, you will find that only addition will be written. The reason behind only addition is that subtraction is nothing but you add the negative number to it, it becomes subtraction. So do not get confused that if it is written only addition, you cannot do a subtraction. So this is also an arithmetic progression. I am saying this is arithmetic progression 1 and this is arithmetic progression 2. Both are arithmetic progressions. Now once you understood what is arithmetic progression? Let me explain you about their properties. The first property we will find out is that definition of the last term or nth term. Let's say the first term is a. The difference between every terms is let's say called common difference which is denoted as typically D and let let's assume that there are n terms in the series then the nth term Tn term nth term will be equal to a plus n minus 1 into d. This you remember. Do not worry. This is not a very complex one. I will tell you exactly how we have found out this formula. Now, this is nothing very very complex one. So think about the first term. The first term means, let's say T1. We will start with T1. That's the first term and that is A. There is no D here. So 0 into D. I can write this. The second term will be the, you will always add one common difference to the preceding number, right? 
So the preceding the preceding number is the first term for the series. Let's say if you cannot visualize, let's say this is T1, T2, T3. This is the series. T4 and it goes up to T n. So this is the series. A P or A P is this one. So T1, the first term is A. The second term will become you will have A and then we will add up a D common difference. Then you will get the second term. So A plus 1 into D. T3 similarly you got A plus 1 into D. Now you add one more D. A plus 2 into D. Now every time you go you will find that you are adding n minus 1 into d. So, t n will become a plus n minus 1 into d. So, if you add n minus 1 into d to the first term, you will get the nth term. Okay. This is what I had written earlier. So, nothing complex. Very easy to remember. We will go to the second property. I am not now erasing everything here. We are going to the second property because all these things will remain common for our entire discussion around properties of arithmetic progression. I am not erasing this stuff. So the second property tells that if you have now let's say n terms and and you have t1, t2, t3 similarly it goes up to tn then rth term from the right from the right you take rth term this rth term from the right will be same as t n minus r plus 1 from the left. So because we are considering t all terms from the left side. We start with t1, the first term and we then move to t2, t3, t3, etc. till tn. So the rth term from the right will be the same as n minus r plus 1 term from the left. This is also not very rocket science. I will decode it for you. Now see that this is the first term. And this is nth term from right. Understood? So now if I will say t1 which is nth term from right, I am saying n is the total number of terms minus instead of r I am saying n minus n plus 1. So n minus n cancels out only remains 1. So this is the first term. Correct? I am putting it t so that it remains as t1. Now similarly t2 the second term. The second term is will become n minus 1 term. The first term was nth term from the right. The second term will become n minus 1 because one term we have already taken out and the first term gone. Now this will be the n minus 1th term. So if you put instead of this n, uh, this r as n minus 1 plus 1 then it becomes t n minus n plus 1 plus 1 which is nothing but n minus n cancels out so it remains 2 so this theory holds good so always remember that the rth term from the right will be same as n minus 1 sorry the rth term from the right will be same as n minus r plus 1 term from the left. 
that is the second property now we will move to the third property third property i'm not telling you it is actually a property but it is the way that you express uh, an arithmetic progression is always mention at least three numbers in the series so do not stop say one and two and this will be an arithmetic progression because it there is a difference but this is not a common difference i mean there is no other number to support the theory that you have a common difference over here so always you mention 1 2 3 then people can correlate yes there is a difference here and that same difference has is getting repeated so always mention at least three number in the series the fourth property is around the common difference if d greater than 0 then the arithmetic progression is an increasing one if d is negative or less than 0 then it will be a decreasing one and it's no brainer if d becomes 0 then basically all numbers are equal this is fourth property then we will come to another property which is for the sum of the series it's very important one remember it the sum is represented s and there are n number of terms so sn we represent as the sum so what will be the sum it will be a plus the second term will be a plus b the third term will be a plus 2d the fourth term will be a plus 4d etc and similarly the last term will be a plus n minus 1d this is the last term now this is very complex let me simplify it and put it in the reverse order if you put in the reverse order the sum will never change whether you add 2 plus 3 or 3 plus 2 it will give the same result as 5 and this is the property of addition which is called commutative property now we will use that and write in the reverse direction so i will tell the last number to come to the front so my last number is a plus n minus 1 into d i am asking the number to come to the front so my back bencher has come to the front bench and then my second number second number from the last okay so what will be the second number from the last again a plus n minus 2d every time i will reduce one one d similarly a plus n minus 3d it will go on and ultimately i will reach to a the last when i reach to the nth position my reverse order will tell that the last number will become a which is nothing but the first number of my series now i will add these two so i get two times the sum which is equal to now this term i will add with this so i have 2a plus n minus 1 into d plus again i will say i will add this two so again i will get 2a plus 1d is there here minus 2d is there so it will become n minus 1 into d so i will go to the last even last also i will get the same 2a plus n minus 1 into d so how many terms will be there again n number of terms so first term is 
added with the first term, second term added with the second term, similarly nth term added with the nth term. So I still get n number of terms, but my summation has become double. Okay, and so and every term, every term is nothing but 2a plus n minus 1 into d. Okay, so now if every term is this, I can straightforward write that this is nothing but equal to n times 2a plus n minus 1 into d. I can write. So if 2 times my sum is equal to n into 2a plus n minus 1 into d, now I can say that Sn can be, I will divide both sides by 2. So my left hand side became only Sn, which is the sum. The right hand side becomes n by 2 into 2a plus n minus 1 into d. This you remember. It's very easy. Sn is equal to n by 2 whole into 2a plus n minus 1 into d. It's very easy to remember. All we have derived and we figured out that this should be the equation for to find out the summation. I hope it would have helped you. We will see in the next session about more practice sets and uh, other theories in the arithmetic progression. It's very interesting concepts are there and we will learn about them in the next session. Thank you.